Okay. All right, three, <clears throat> two, one, AR, M4, full auto, <laughs> the government. <laughs> Stand by, engage. Hey everybody, it's Eric and Roy. And thank you for checking out another Hatchet Cast episode. And today we're gonna talk about some really easy upgrades and what we upgrade on our rifles, specifically our AR 15s, whenever we are building our own stuff. So uh, <clears throat> make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. It really does help us out. If you wanna support us, a lot of you guys ask, how can we support you? You can always jump over on our website, come and train with us. That's yep. the easiest way. You benefit from it. We benefit from it. We have plenty of accessories and other things up on the website. We're adding more and more stuff constantly all the time. We got hats up there, uh, plenty of different classes to choose from. We have our ghost rig. We have our new ghost map pouch. Yep. And then hopefully here soon we'll have some more swag, like different T-shirts and maybe some of these accessories that you're that we're going over today. How we like to run our rifles. Yeah, so. absolutely. Yeah. Um, is there a disclaimer for this? Um, not really. I mean, um, for the most part, I would say all of these products that we do run on our rifles, for the most part, are not provided to us by any of the manufacturers. Um, yeah. Most of them are purchased by ourselves. We do get a couple of products by by some companies here and there, um, but we run those because that's what we already had on our rifles yeah and those companies were seeing that mm -hmm. and they were like hey you know let me send you let me send you a charging handle or let me yeah. send you a ambi safety or something like that yeah. but uh, we're, we have been buying these products a lot of these manufacturers have been purchasing their products for several you know for the past probably 10 15 years mm. so um, so really not a whole lot of disclaimer here everything that we have sitting up here on the table today would be how we prefer and what you'll probably find in most of our rifles and how we set them up we get that question quite often uh, on Instagram and uh, on YouTube, like, hey, what scope mount was that? Or, hey, what sling are you guys running? Yeah. Like, what 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 kind of charging handle are you running suppressed? Yeah. Like, no, we, yeah. We, we, get that, we get that quite often. Uh, well, so, yeah, let's kind of dive into it. Let's just... Uh, start we'll off with yeah. the sling. Yeah, we'll start off with the sling. Um, uh, Eric and myself uh, have been blessed um, to know and meet the guys over at Lunar Concept yep. and also Wiseman Company. Yeah. So uh, they've been a big part of our life mm -hmm. as far as helping us out. And honestly, I've kind of been running their sling before I ever actually met Ben yeah. and those guys. Um, and the moment that I got the meeting, it was like, oh, cool, awesome. I, you know, I've been running your stuff for a long time. So mm -hmm. we run the Wiseman Company sling. Um, specifically, a lot of times you'll see us running the contour sling. Yeah, okay? the contour. Uh, so you'll see this on a lot of rifles. Contour sling is padded, kind of rolls over your shoulder. Very, very comfortable. It contours to your body. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, they make it in a left-handed and a right-handed. Yeah. So you have it both, both directions. One of the coolest things that I like from Wiseman Company slash Lunar Concepts um, that Lunar Concepts makes for Wiseman Company is it's called the Prism Pocket. You add this to your sling is where I have mine set up on it, but it's a small little pouch. You can add some tools in here, you can add something else, whatever it may be. For me, I actually keep a small bottle of oil. Mm. I keep a little lube. Little lube. Uh, <laughs> keep some cleanse oil in there. Uh, cleanse oil is the oil that we run. Uh, cleanse Oil does not sponsor us or anything like that. So Cleanse Oil, if you do want to sponsor us, it would be really, really sweet and cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, hopefully you're watching this. But they're a local company uh, right here in Central Florida. 
and veteran owned and they are really cool dudes. Nice. So um, for myself here at the shop, I've been purchasing from them for a long time and mm. uh, just felt natural to run their loop. So. Yeah. But the prison pocket, as far as adding on to your sling, Primo, excellent design, fantastic. I highly suggest that you pick one of those up. I think they're only like 15 bucks. Yeah. So a phenomenal piece of accessory that probably is overlooked a lot mm -hmm. is having the ability to carry simple little things like this. You could put a battery in here. Yeah. Um, if, you're running, if you're running EOTEX, a CR2032 battery yeah. or a AA battery or something, not 2032, I'm sorry, CR123. 158, 30, <laughs> yeah. all these numbers, okay? Um, like I said, I prefer to run lube in mine. Yeah. That's how I do it. You can't have enough lube with you. Mm. I think the other thing that I like specifically, one is the contour, the fact that they make a left-handed version for me, a genius as any other Southpaw out there watching. Yeah, typical weirdo. Frickin' genius. <laughs> uh, but also the big thing is for me, I love to have a very smooth slider. So the slider adjustment yes. on all of their slings, not just the contour, are That's very, very smooth. That's the, honestly the, the mm. direction. I uh, They have a baseline sling. Mm. Um, that was the sling that I was running for a long period of time. And it, the reason why is because of how smooth that slider was. Yeah, very That's smooth. why I chose it. Uh, some of the slings tend to get a little too thick. Or complicated. And, and complicated. Yeah. So uh, right in this particular area where the slider is, um, some of the webbing that they use can be a little bit oversized and yeah. a little aggressive. Yeah. Uh, and it makes it very difficult to slide. Yeah. Um, the, the Lunar Concept Wiseman Company sling right here, the contour, it, it just moves and glides pretty easy. So. Let's talk about real quick also on the sling. Uh, we do run QDs. So yeah. quick D, quick detach uh, f points for your sling. Uh, one of the big things is this is a military type thing where as far as the construction of it, where the need was is the QD was to be able to get in and out of a sling quickly without having to bust out a knife to cut it out. So yeah. if you're in a helo crash or trying to get out of a vehicle gets around the steering wheel, busting out and you know just detaching the QD uh, is a, a huge benefit to have. Understand also this is a life-saving piece of equipment. So make sure you're maintaining those ball bearings, cleaning yeah, them definitely. off, making sure they don't get dirt and debris and they get stuck closed or stuck open. Uh, but you we will find, we see this quite often out on the range, uh, especially with a lot of the uh, more modern style or what everyone should be training uh, is having a more open mind and, and doing a lot of moving. Yeah. Because uh, you're probably going to move in a real world. So if you're moving in a real world and you're not standing on a static line, you may find where these these possibly could come loose on you. Yeah. So there does... You do have you do have some maintenance there. Yeah. Uh, you do need to take these off occasionally and clean them, clean mm -hmm. the pockets out. Uh, like this one right here, actually on this particular stock right now, is froze up inside here. What? <laughs> <Let's> see, <laughs> it probably should needs to be taken yeah. apart and clean. You will get some sand and grit, especially if you live on the beach like us in Florida here. Mm -hmm. um, so maintain your QDs, but we do recommend running some ability to get out of it. I know uh, 100 Concepts is coming out with possibly a new design yep. for a QD system that seems like it'll be pretty cool. So look forward to those guys. Um, they always come out with a pretty cool product. Yeah. So um, yeah, let's keep moving uh, from the rear of the gun. Our stocks, uh, we do prefer the Magpul CTR. Yeah. I know that's kind of outdated. A lot of people are running like uh, the B5 SOP mod still or, or like new uh, Magpul. or the new <laughs> Magpul SL or the SLK. We actually prefer the CTR because you have the ability to run the cheek riser on it. Yeah. Uh, you'll find most of our rifles are set up to run uh, with night vision yep. and to run passive. We do run our optics, like if they're magnified, we try to keep the magnified optic as low to the gun as we possibly can, yeah. but usually we will have a dot on top. Now, one of the things that myself and Eric do um, is we actually purchase one cheek riser and we <laughs> split it between the two of us. Yeah. So um, it's a very, very good cost saving. So you can actually set up two rifles with one of these. We chop it in half because all we are utilizing this for is when we're in that passive standpoint shooting that I have a reference point mm -hmm. to get my cheek on it, okay? Um, and it, it allows me to still have a solid cheek well behind it, mm -hmm. but then whenever I need to suck down into my magnified optic and get my eye directly behind it where I would not naturally fall forward on it, easy enough to do with that I still have plenty enough room. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the CTR stock with the new risers, there's a lot of companies coming out there that sell this exact same thing. I had a lot of folks ask me and Roy, yeah. hey, is that that company's riser? And it's like, no, we literally pay, this is a $20 riser, mm -hmm. cut it in half, and we literally get two risers out of price for I don't even know if it's 20 bucks. It could be less than that. Oh, right? wow. It's, a, it's, it's pretty, pretty affordable. Yeah, so if you're paying... $70, $80 for a cheek riser. Yeah. There's a lot cheaper option out there. And if you're running something like a B5 or something, we've done this before in the past mm -hmm. where we've just taken foam 
mm -hmm. and tape it, you know, run gaffers tape over yeah. top of it. Which and actually, build up, build there's up a, that cheek riser. a cool company, Ape Defense, does oh, yeah, have a, about. a They have it for riser. the B5. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's, so, a, that's actually a really, really cool product. Mm -hmm. Check those guys out. Maybe uh, we'll have to hit them up and try it out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, those guys are cool. So uh, they watch our stuff, so they'll probably send this one. So. Yeah, cool. <laughs> um, uh, continue moving for Actually, on the back of the gun, uh, moving forward from there, our... Um sticking with the stock. Oh, yeah. We do prefer to run the Veltor A5 system. It is slightly a little longer than your typical carbine length. Mm. A uh, couple reasons. A, it's a very smooth system as far as felt recoil. But the other thing is, is it gives us one more adjustment. Instead of having six positions, you actually have seven positions. Real now, nice. myself and Eric are not very tall whatsoever. Mm. <laughs> uh, we're typical normal. Eric's Asian, and I'm just a white dude from Plant City. <laughs> so <laughs> we're very, very normal here. <laughs> Don't speak Spanish to me. I'm not Hispanic. <laughs> uh, we're very normal, very normal sized. 5'9", um, 5'10". Five, five, it's not that we necessarily always need that extra length, mm. but it's nice to have it. Certain situations when you're running things like night vision and you need to get a little bit further behind the yeah. rifle, having that extra click to come to the rear is very, very comfortable. It's a nice ap option to yeah. have. So yeah. there's really no downfall to have it. No. If you're a taller dude, I would highly suggest it. If you're yeah. sitting around six foot, six foot one. And you're running a 10-3. Run it. <laughs> run the Veltor A5 on everything. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, it's it's nice. Yeah. Uh, as far as how we spring our rifles and how we buffer them, that's going to be completely gas uh, based on the gas system. Mm -hmm. uh, so I can't really give you a whole lot of recommendations there. And if you if you if you do need a little bit of insight on how to how to spring your rifle correctly for your setup, just send us a message directly off the website or on IG, um, and I and I can I can give you you know I can give you some advice yeah. based on you know your suppressor that you're running, your barrel length, maybe what barrel you're running. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot. There's a lot of variables that go into that. Uh, your gas port size and your barrel, and how overgassed your barrel is, and what can, what can you run in. So I don't yeah. want to dive too deep into that. There's a lot of science there. It's pretty much a whole video. <clears> on yeah, time. it's a whole video. Um, the buffer and the buffer weight and the buffer system and all that is going to be based on your setup. But yeah. the length. And there's a lot of companies offering this now. BCM offers the exact same mm. thing. Veltor, there's a couple of others. So you don't necessarily have to go with the Veltor. I choose the Veltor just because they've been around the longest doing it. Mm -hmm. So that's what I prefer. Um, our grips um, on the lower. We prefer more a little bit of a straighter angle when it comes to the grip. Eric's looking at me because I'm jumping. I keep he pointing keep... at the wrong thing on <laughs> yeah. the notes, and he's like, no dummy, you're wrong. Yeah, you're right. in the wrong spot. <laughs> <laughs> we're sticking in the lower right now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we typically will run a little bit of a straighter angle grip. Um, I know I prefer the Magpul K2. Yeah. Uh, you have the Magpul K2 on most of your setups yep. also. K2 and then the K2 Plus yeah, on Yeah, so if you kind of uh, like the rubbery feel, yeah. uh, the K2 Plus, is the, that's that's what that is. Uh, standard K2 is just going to be your normal stippling. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of great grips out there that have that straight angle. We prefer the Magpul just for the fact that because it has the, uh, the easy access of the storage compartment yes. on the bottom. It's just another area to either throw a battery in or mm -hmm. throw an additional bottle of lube in it. Um, yeah. If you're running a gas operator rifle, you can never have enough lubrication with you. Yeah. So uh, I, I shove lube up inside mine. So. Yeah, <laughs> shove lube everywhere. <laughs> Use that cut. <laughs> I will say on the Magpul grip, one thing that is kind of a cool thing that I actually picked up from another instructor is putting a spare bolt you know, for 45 bucks, you can buy a spare bolt. I've seen, we've seen rifles go down all the time in classes. Yeah. Most of the time it's like gas ring or something, but it's still related to the bolt. So right. throwing an extra bolt in your grip kind of is like a, a saves yeah. you. You, you can know, do that if, in that prison pocket also. Oh, yeah. bolt, the bolt will fit in there. <clears throat> so like just TV having bolt. extra storage in your gun for extra parts, batteries, whatever, what have you, it will save you in the end. Yeah. So the Magpul uh, K2 or the K2 Plus, that's our preferred. Um, just something with that little bit of a straighter angle to it. Um, ambidextrous, <laughs> <laughs> ambidextrous safety. Um, I am not left-handed. Uh, I am right-handed, but Eric is it's obviously left-handed. Uh, it's all right. It's okay. But I still actually prefer an ambi safety. Yeah. It gives you <laughs> options um, for manipulating that safety and, and getting it on and off uh, a little bit smoother and quicker uh, based on my situation. Um, you know, if I'm in a un very unorthodox position, mm -hmm. uh, can't necessarily get my got my rifle rolled over yeah. on its opposite side. I always have a always have a, the ability. There's no downside to having an ambi safety. Right. Uh, the radiant is a really really cool one. 
Uh, you'll find this on some of our rifles. Most of our rifles have a typical mil spec yeah. ambi safety, like you would find in a normal, you know, uh, issued rifle nowadays. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty much sure all the military issued yeah. rifles now have ambi safety. All the right? all the new M4s are running ambi safeties. When I first was, uh, you know, very early on in my military career, I was we didn't have that option. Uh, guys would kind of mod stuff out, but like yeah. I had to learn how to <clears> use <throat> only the safety traditionally. Yep. Um, but having the ambi safety made life a whole lot easier and also a lot faster. Yeah, it'll, uh, significantly faster. Mm -hmm. There's really no reason not to no. have one. There's so many great options out there. Like I said, the Radiant, uh, you can uh, you can go with adjustable lever, so you don't necessarily have a full length lever on your left you side one. if you want a short lever. Yeah. If you want to do something like a short throw, um, so you're like super fast, like, you're, like your performance level goes to another level <laughs> because you got 60 degree throw versus that full 90. So, so short, you're, you're in another dimension. You're cutting tenths of a second off <laughs> yeah. uh, with your short throw safety. Um, you have that ability to yeah. do so. Uh, so yeah, solid uh, ambidextrous safety. Uh, triggers. <clears throat> um, we run two-stage triggers. Two That's stage. what we prefer. Uh, as far as brands, I'm going to give you a few few different brands that we run. Okay, yeah. um, Geisley or Bill Geisley, Bill Geisley, Geisley triggers, um, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's Geisley. Bill Jizzle. Bill Jizzle. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get one of those Jizzle triggers. <laughs> <laughs> jizzle on my jizzle. Jizzle, <laughs> jizzle me this. Um, LaRue. I don't typically buy a lot of Geisley triggers that yeah. much anymore because I feel like uh, there's a few other manufacturers out there now building a high, a high enough quality trigger Impact. that the break on it is nice and clean and yeah. smooth. I don't need a super light trigger. So I've ran Geisley SSAs and SSAEs for a very long time. <clears throat> but for the most part, those are sitting beyond $200 yeah. as far as price point. Um, you can occasionally get some deals where you get them sub $200, mm -hmm. but for the most part, you're beyond $200 for that trigger. Great trigger, um, but man, I got a lot of rifles to outfit. Yeah. So um, I, 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 we tend to lean towards LaRue triggers. Uh, you can pick up like LaRue triggers if you buy them like in a three pack or a four pack if you mm -hmm. got a lot of rifles for like 79 bucks a piece. Wow. Very, very clean break. They actually have a flat face one now. Mm -hmm. um, two stays, it's very, very nice. I actually like their shoe, their trigger shoe. It's a little bit wider. Yeah. So it feels really, really good. Uh, and then another good mention in the uh, trigger worldwide goes for a two stage would be Centurion Arms. Mm. Their trigger is also really, really clean. So yeah. they're not gonna be the lightest triggers. A Geisley SSAE is probably going to break closer to that than you know, um, you know, two and a half to three pounds mm -hmm. on a, on a good broken in one. Uh, the the Larue and the uh, and the Centurion trigger is probably going to be closer to that four and a half five pounds. Yeah. But it's not necessarily the poundage; it's how clean it is. Yeah. Uh, it's very crisp. So, and those triggers can be picked up for about eighty to hundred dollars. Yeah, I mean the so Larue. That's, that's the that's the way I like it. <clears throat> the Larue is one of my favorite triggers. It's one the price point's awesome. The Geisley reliability. Yeah, the reliability is amazing. The Geisley I run is almost like a to trigger I had a long time ago when I <laughs> cried once and bought once a long time ago, and I kind of run it, but I just run Larues. Yep. Um, and it is just a great um, budget trigger that also really gives you. Yep. A lot of performance, and it's a very crisp uh, break. So. Yep. So the Geisley <clears throat> triggers, the LaRue triggers, the Centurion Arms triggers. Uh, I'm going to let Eric cover the bad lever. I don't run a bad lever, um, but... <laughs> He's um, right -handed. The, the bad lever is a very useful tool, mm -hmm. whether you're right-handed or left-handed. Um, Eric uses it for the benefit of being a lefty. Yeah. It can be used, utilized as a right-handed shooter. Um, for clearing malfunctions, locking that bolt open to the rear. So there's a, there's a lot of benefits to the bad mm -hmm. lever. I used to run one quite often. I'm very familiar with it. I like the bad lever. I do think that it is a good upgrade. Mm -hmm. I don't currently run one. I haven't ran one in a while, mm. but uh, Eric utilizes it a lot as a lefty, right? Yeah, I mean, as far as a lefty, I've always found that mm -hmm. uh, as far as the the bar when I'm locking my bolt to the rear is just a longer bar, so I don't have to reach all the way up to that ping pong paddle. I can just hit the bar, yep. kind of be a little bit lazy with it and lock the bolt to the rear. And then also on my reloads, it's really fast. So whenever I index that mag and I come up to insert the mag, my thumb's already there by the bad lever. I hit yep. it with my thumb and then I go for it. Kind of like basically a lot of the ambidextrous lowers will be. Yes, um, yes. So, you know, some of these things that we're talking about can be can be handled with modern lowers. Uh, as we progress, I, I feel like all lowers should should, should be ambi. Should, should be ambi. Yeah. Uh, hopefully those prices will come down, but I mean, you know, uh, at the end of the day, they're not quite there right now, so you can, you know, uh, you can still pick up quality lowers like a Palmetto State lower yeah. or, or Anderson, a Providy Pony lower um, for, you know, 
50 to 60 bucks, yeah. you know, uh, so they're pretty affordable. So adding a little accessories like this, like yeah. ambi controls, bad lever, kind of gives you that. Uh, speaking of ambidextrous controls, that's a really handy thing to have, uh, especially having, you know, um, you know, one of my closest friends and my business partner uh, as a lefty, a weirdo. Uh, as, as genius. <laughs> as he had a mistake. Am ambidextrous magazine release. Yeah. Yeah, so and, and the, the, mag release. the Noragon mag release is what I run. I actually got it from my friend Steve, uh, and he actually said, hey, he's also Steve, a lefty. Steve's also a weirdo. Yeah, he's also a genius. <laughs> so my friend, friend, fellow doctor genius uh, friend Steve, um, he was running Noragon mag release. Was surprised I had never had one, so he let me have one of his, and it changed everything. And it's a yep. amazing upgrade. It's only like 30 bucks. And honestly, you can now upgrade that simple Anderson lower to a full ambi, ambi lower <clears throat> yeah. for, for a fraction of the cost. Yeah, so, so uh, very, very reliable too. Uh, I've had some in, some of my lowers for quite some time, mm -hmm. uh, so I definitely recommend it, even as a right-handed shooter. Mm -hmm. It just gives you more options. Yeah. So um, I'm talking on the lower, especially if you got a, a little bit more budget-minded lower and you're not picking up something that has more, per se, like a flared mag well to yeah. it. Uh, Which, by the way, if your company it's 2023. Start As of this bit, your flare well. your magwell. Yeah, yeah, start flaring your magwell. You don't have to make it ambi, just yeah. flare the magwell. And I don't really feel like there's going to be a whole lot of extra cost involved. I feel like you can build. I mean, um, uh, Aero Precision already kind of does it. Yeah. With the M4 E1 lower. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a $100 lower and it has a flared magwell to it. That's all yeah. you got to do. Yeah. Uh, the rest of you guys can copy right on board. With it. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, so kudos to you for Aero Precision for flaring that magwell. I'm sure there's a few other companies out there. Mm -hmm. But if you got a budget-minded lower, a typical normal mil-spec lower, and you want that little bit high performance when it comes to topping your gun off. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I'm just talking about just topping your gun off just naturally, just inserting mags in uh, through a moment of pause, a tactical reload, mm -hmm. or uh, any of that. That flared magwell assists you uh, quite a bit. Yeah. Um, the HRF flared magwell is a very, very simple and easy to install. There's only one person that I've ever met that can destroy one of those by installing it, and he was a Marine. So if you're a Marine, <laughs> maybe step back, grab your orange crowns. Give it to Air Force guy. <laughs> Give it to an Air Force guy or something like that, or a typical normal civilian that, or, can, yeah, that can read. A regular person. <laughs> a regular person. Uh, Zach, I love you, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Zach, Zach went to install one for me, one of the simplest things to ever do, and he just literally, he came back to me and it was in pieces. Oh, so, gosh. So. That's a Marine for you, though, right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> love our love Marines, by the love way. Love 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 but the HRF Magwell, uh, super <laughs> simple design, fantastic design. Um, yeah, grab one of those, pick it up. Very, very economically priced. Change a, yeah. change a basic, dull, boring lower. Into a high-speed lower. Yeah, into a high-speed lower. Yeah. Uh, upper receiver, moving into the upper receiver. Thank goodness. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right, so back over to Gaisley, Bill Gaisley. <laughs> Bill, jizzle me this. Yeah, Bill Gaisley. Uh, we run his charging handles. Yeah, we do. They're great. And they're great charging handles. They do a fantastic job of deflecting that gas mm -hmm. out of your face. The levers are very, very smooth. Mm -hmm. The fitment inside the upper receiver, there's not a lot of wobble. No. Okay. So one of the things I look for in a charging handle is 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 when I'm pulling it to the rear, how much of a bind mm -hmm. is it in? You will find some manufacturers out there. Now I know there's a lot of great charging handles. I'm not telling you that your radian charging handle is a piece of junk. Because it's not. It's a no. phenomenal charging handle. Run the Radiant if you got it. Yeah. We just prefer the Geisley charging handle. Mm -hmm. um, I would prefer to give Radiant my money Yeah. over Geisley yeah. at the end of the day. But I just really like the Geisley charging handle. Uh, they have the Airborne charging handle and then the SPR. The SPR has a little bit larger levers yeah. on it. And you'll that's find, what I'm running. Yeah, so you'll find the SPRs, especially <laughs> on a lot of our scope carbines. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll run the airborne on some of the more compact rifles. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the guys that charge and handle can't say enough about it. Fantastic. Yeah. I actually like the color to the, uh, um, the bronze, the bronze color. It looks really, really cool when it gets a little bit of batter and a little bit war to mm -hmm. it. I mean, a little, I, little I, gas on I've it. I've been running my guys charging handle for many years. I'm talking like years and yep. it's the one piece where I'm like, I don't ever have to replace it. And it's just nice with those ambidextrous. Yep. Just grab one side and rack it back uh, versus yep. T-Rex claw on it. So. Yep. The, uh, another mentionable charging handle that's pretty solid that does a great job of uh, breaking up gas in your face too is the Griffin Armament mm. charging handle. Right. Uh, yeah. I have one of those and it works extremely well. Yeah. 
I don't know how available that charging handle is. The Geisley is definitely more available. You can pretty much almost walk into almost any gun shop and pick up one of those. Uh, by the way, if you're ever in Plant City, you come know, to drop, the shop. Come to the shop. Come and see myself and Eric. Uh, pick yourself up a Geisley charging mm -hmm. handle. So, uh, fantastic charging handle. Been very, very happy with it. Is it fantastic? It is fantastic. fantastic. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> this is not something that is necessary when it comes to upgrading your rifle or, or building out your rifle, but if you are building out a new upper receiver or something like that, the Magpul ejection port cover, mm. I think Ben over at Wiseman Company is actually the one that pointed it out to me. He's like, yeah. hey dude, you gotta order one of these. And I was putting a new upper together. <laughs> I was almost speechless as far as how cool of a design that it was. Yeah. There's there's literally nothing, I mean, you just literally, everything's in claps, in, in in encapsulated, it's enclosed together. Enclosed together, encapsulated together, yeah, yeah. right? Okay, uh, and you just push the detents in and drop it into place. Yeah. Very, very quick. Closes very smooth. Yeah. Nice and durable. Made out of Magpul's polymer design. Mm -hmm. So the paint lays on it fantastic. So if you're a Picasso and like to paint your rifle. Like both looks, of us. Yeah, it looks really, really yeah. good once you paint it. Yeah, I um, think the other thing is a lot of people don't honestly consider, and you should be doing this, Roy and I will, if you come to one of our classes, we're gonna hound you on it. Yeah. But closing that dust cover, and it's a very and, easy and, dust and cover this, close. Very easy dust cover. And this really comes from us, especially shooting in this very sandy environment. Yeah. Any kind of pause that we have, you're gonna find our dust cover gets closed because we've had bolt carriers that we have just ate a yeah, lot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Actually, there is a there is a video. It's a short. It's on the channel. You can actually look. It's called the Cooper's Drill, and it's on our channel in a, in a short. Yeah. And Roy's running it, and you can see him every time he gets up. And as he's running, he's closing his dust cover. I yeah. looked every time, and I was like, Yeah, he closes dust it's, cover. It's there's so every much time. there's so much dust. Yeah. There's so much sand uh, in our environment. Uh, it just when, becomes when natural. When you, it becomes natural. Yeah. Uh, you get you get close to down to that ground. Mm. Um, it's kicking up in your face, yeah. regardless if you're shooting suppressed or not. Right. Uh, so so. Having a solid, smooth dust cover that's easy to close. Um, and I, I would say the Magpul dust cover is a very, very um, worthwhile purchase. Probably, yeah. I think it's like maybe like 20 bucks or so. Uh, I'm sure I got one sitting over on the shelf to get an actual legit price on it. Worth it. Worth it. Speaking of um, closing that dust cover and what we're doing behind that is we're protecting our bolt carrier group. Mm -hmm. Like I said a minute ago, we have eight gas rings alive. And we've our broken, bolt we've yeah. broken bolt carrier Yeah, we've broken yeah. bolts. Um, probably my favorite bolt carrier group and the bolt carrier group that I find to be very, very consistent as far as quality control. Mm, yeah. All right, where, where it's coming in and everything is generally in spec all the time. Um, they run Springco extractor springs in them, mm -hmm. which I highly recommend if you got a bolt carrier group, even if it's from another manufacturer that you run a, a Springco extractor spring in yeah. it um, with their O-ring. Mm -hmm. We run Sons of Liberty Gunworks bolt carrier groups. Yeah, that's what you're going to find in most of our rifles. We got a few old rifles that don't haven't been changed over. Yeah, it's actually not an overpriced bolt carrier group. I feel like it's actually a pretty good bang for your buck. Uh, you can typically probably pick them up if the market is right and it's not overinflated. You can usually get them in about that hundred fifty dollar price point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Yes, there are bolt carrier groups out there that you can pick up for $89 or, you know, just over a hundred bucks. The Aero Precision you can usually get for like a hundred to $120. Aero Precision has their new Pro Line carrier, okay. which is also another solid carrier. They're like $139, $149. But for myself and checking specs and checking gas runoff inside my carrier, mm -hmm. um, gas keys, the, the, how they stake the gas key, down to the, the the bolts that they use, the screws that they use for the gas key. Um, everything is everything is done properly. Yeah. Every single time. So we we typically stick with Sons of Liberty Gunworks when yeah. it comes to the bolt carrier groups. No issues. Uh, still haven't had any issues. Them as a company, they yeah. do a great job of quality control and and really putting pride in their products. And you can actually you can definitely tell. You could tell it just by you know just by the way they talk. Yeah. And the way the way that they hold themselves. They so care. Sons of Liberty Gunworks, when it comes to their bulk carrier groups, uh, huge fan. Highly suggest them. I agree. Um, I would I would run one of those in every one of my mm -hmm. rifles. Uh, the handguard. This is going to be really kind of user preference because mm. we got a lot of different handguards. But well, do you want to talk real quick, like? some key points of what we're looking for yeah. in a handguard and why yeah. it's important. So one of the things I look for in a handguard is, is, is how it interfaces the upper receiver. Does it have some type of anti-tilt or anti-canting? Mm. Um, is it going to kind of come up and face up against the upper receiver where it has maybe some tangs that, uh, that kind of almost lock up against the upper receiver so the 
the rail can't twist on me. Right. So that's one of the other things. That's one of the things. How long the barrel nut is, okay? Mm. Is it a really, really short barrel nut? So some of these rails that are out there may have a barrel nut on it that's probably maybe like a, a couple inches long, not even a couple inches long, maybe like an inch long or inch and a half long. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> the longer that barrel nut is, the stiffer the rail is going to be mm. out front, okay? Meaning that I'm gonna have less flex. Right. You do a lot of shooting off of barricades like we do. A lot. When you're putting that mm -hmm. rifle on the barricade and you're setting that handguard down on it and you're bearing down into it, putting some pressure on it, is that handguard flexing, mm. okay? Um, so if you, some of the manufacturers that are out there uh, do a really good job um, building a very, very stiff barrel nut that's, that's long enough that's sitting around that two, two and a half inches or so in right. length that extends a little further than, than some of the other manufacturers that's going to add some rig rigidness Basically, rigidity. Rigidity. Yeah. Yep. Um, rigidness. <laughs> rigidness. <laughs> Rigid rigidity <laughs> to the end of the rail down yeah. there. Okay. Uh, the anti kilting tilt uh, or cant per se. I really like that because we run a lot of uh, aiming devices. Yeah. On our rails. Yeah. So making sure that that device stays zero. It stays zero. Uh, a couple of manufacturers to mention that we typically stick with a lot is uh, and and not all these are like super expensive rails. No. No. I mean, the, um, probably there. Yeah, we have a good moderate yep. and then you got some higher end stuff yep. but yeah i yeah. mean you can start at the top like a like a you know a daniel defense rail like mm -hmm. a riz 3 rail super solid freaking robust it's bomb a tank proof. it's a tank <laughs> yeah. uh the knight's armament rails mm -hmm. uh the, the the riz 2 rails or any of their rails or their mlock rails yeah all of those are extremely solid rails but they're expensive they're yeah. definitely above that 300 hundred dollar price mark yeah. uh maybe even more than that depending mm -hmm. on the market and how inflated it is right uh so so they are kind of expensive uh, Sons of Liberty Gunworks, their wedge lock um, rail is very, very solid. I think they also have what's called an S-lock rail, mm -hmm. which I do believe is made by Zev, is who makes their oh, rails okay. for them. Huh. <clears throat> which I think Zev, used, Zev bought out Mega Arms or something like that. Oh, um, right. You know, uh, may not be 100% true, but uh, very solid rails. The way that S-lock interfaces, where you have this uh, tension coming from both directions, mm -hmm. uh, we don't find that those move. Those are all rails that are a little bit more expensive that are probably in that high twos to above three, maybe mm -hmm. even touching $400 mark. Uh, a good mention for a rail that um, we've had great luck with and has been very, very solid is the Cross Machine Tool Rail. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we run a lot of the Cross Machine Tool Rails. They have the M-Lock kind of wrapped all the way around and all the different clock angles there. Mm -hmm. They also have a really cool rail out now that has an Arca rail built into the bottom of it. Yeah. Uh, if you're not familiar with Arca Swiss, if you're running something with a bipod on it, it is absolutely phenomenal. If you're ever doing tripod shooting or anything like that, the Arca Swiss is definitely the way to go. I think the Jizzly, the new Jizzle rail the Jizzle also rail. has it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so um, uh, Geisley has a rail. Uh, <laughs> jizzle. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it'll jizzle you. It'll, j it'll yeah, dazzle you. So, uh, the Geisley rail uh, is very, very solid also, the way it interfaces, and they, they have that Arca Swiss too. Plus, it gives you a really nice flat bottom yeah. for setting on barricades. Yeah. So. I think the, the, the two styles that we run, obviously, is M-Lock, yep. and with all the way around, like, like clockwork all over the place, don't really use, we, the M-Lock is the vent. We don't have like special s shapes for venting. Yep. And then the quad rail for rigidity and stiffness. If we want to be a little bit more robust. Let's talk M-Lock for a second. Why yeah. we chose M-Lock, okay? Uh, we chose M-Lock specifically because that's the way the market is trending. It is. Yeah. That's it, okay? Yeah, that's uh, it. That's, that's the only reason why. Yeah. Is, do I feel like M-Lock is the end all be all? No, it definitely has its downfalls, mm -hmm. especially in a lot of these very low profile rails, like yeah. the Sons of Liberty Gunworks rail. It is a very low profile rail. <clears throat> what you run into a lot of times with the M-Lock screws, if you're not careful, something the key to watch out for is you may actually put upward tension or downward tension on your barrel where those tips of those screws are touching mm -hmm. your gas block or touching your barrel or something like that. Yeah. Uh, if you're running a heavier profile barrel like we run quite often and you're running some type of M-Lock accessory, like a light bar or light mount or something, um, and these very low profile rails uh, like Centurion Arms and some Sons of Liberty, mm -hmm. you may want to trim your screws. Yeah. Take a look at that. We've seen a lot of point of impact shift quite often. Guys come out to scope carbine classes or they're zero in their rifle, and uh, you know the rifle's consistently shooting all over the place because. Yeah. Uh, they have they have something touching the barrel mm -hmm. and a lot of times that's caused by those m-lock screws so uh m-lock m-lock i don't believe is the end all be all no actually i think key mod was a little better for lower profile systems mm -hmm. 
because it, it, it set more flush. Um, key, key mod obviously had its flaws too, mm -hmm. uh, expensive to manufacture and it would tend to vibrate loose quite often. Yeah. Uh, M-Lock does stay very tight if you install it correctly. So that's another key is installing your accessories correctly with your, you know, checking to make sure that those screws are not protruding through too far, touching your barrel. And then the other thing would be is making sure that you actually have them locked in. We'll see a lot of times where guys are coming out and they're running and they're shooting a rifle or whatever, they got their bipod mounted on it, especially in scope carbine classes, they got their bipod mounted in lock or their QD accessory mounted on M lock and they're shooting in an under recoil, their bipod falls off. Yeah. It's because they never actually had the little T locking nuts. Rotate. Rotate. <clears throat> they were up in there, they were tight enough on retention to kind of hold it, but as soon as you put some pressure on it, you know, it falls yeah. off. So yeah. take your time, install it correctly. If you ever got any questions on it or something like that, or if you're in the Central Florida area and you want to stop in, I can I can show you how to do that. Yeah, so. I think as far as the rail, the one thing to consider is if you're going to go light, you have to sacrifice something, and that's going to be rigidity. Mm -hmm. If you're going to go with rigidity, you're going to sacrifice weight. It's going to be heavier. So you, yep. it's understand it's a give and take. For us, we specifically run towards having a strong rail because of those zero uh, or those aiming devices. Yeah, so talk about um, strong rails and the reason why we chose that is because of our aiming devices. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to dive too deep into this because this is an entire a whole another, another whole video. Another video. <laughs> um, I'm just going to tell you where we focus right now. Yeah. Okay. Um, what we put our money into um, based on that we have a lot of rifles to set up. And, you know, and a lot of times we're actually sharing accessories back and forth mm -hmm. um, because some of these things are so expensive. Yeah. IR devices are very expensive. Very. Okay. Uh, and I understand that there's, you know, full power out there on the market that you can get uh, secondhand mm -hmm. type stuff like that. The downside a lot of times to the full power stuff is that you don't necessarily have any manufacturer backing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you're buying something. You're spending, you know, sixteen hundred to two thousand dollars for, for, you know, for a full power pack or something or maybe like that, even more, or sometimes. maybe yeah. even more. Uh, that's on the more affordable side of it. Yeah, <clears throat> full power D ball or whatever it may be, and you don't if, it, if something happens to that. And it, and it goes down, you don't necessarily have a manufacturer. Now, yeah. I know that I understand there's ways around it. There's like repair centers that you can get it to this guy. Mm -hmm. You know, this guy knows somebody that can get it to this guy and he can get it over there and they yeah. can get it repaired for you. And that's jumping through a lot of hoops. Yeah. You also don't know what happened during the life of that laser yeah. or that device. Like it could have spent time down range. It could have been, mm -hmm. you know, used, abused heavily by a department. It could have been really, really hard uh it had a hard electronics yeah. break yes that's it yeah. so um they break often yeah uh they get weathered they get beat up they get beat around on barricades they get beat around in vehicles they well, get dropped just by because someone throws a rifle in the back of a truck and yep. it lands on the yep. device right. so. so um we tend to lean towards a lot of civilian powered ir devices yeah um and when it comes to civilian power due to ITAR laws and stuff like that, you're only going to go so bright. Yeah. Now, I will tell you from my experience, um, a civilian power laser, generally speaking, does everything that I need it to do. Yeah. It's And, and also with that, like the civilian powered lasers, it can only go so high. Like Correct. whether you get a mall or you get a hollow sun, Correct. the laser is never going to go brighter than what is prescribed for the civilian per the law. So. If you're buying a $3,500 laser and a hollow sun, the laser output is going to be the same. The yep. Really, the only, the big difference is going to be your IR illumination, Correct. and that's kind of where we and are heading. And that's where yeah. we put our focus into. Yes. Um, I, heck, I mean, for IR aiming devices, we have some of the more affordable just um, hollow suns. Yeah. Uh, we actually use some of them in our night vision class as far mm -hmm. as rentals. Uh, we have the Steiner Otol, uh, the Steiner CQB, a few mm -hmm. ones like that that are a little bit more on the affordable side. Mm -hmm. So we do put a little bit more emphasis on, um, on our IR heads. Those IR heads that we're using typically disconnect from the body of the, uh, of the laser aiming yep. device. Uh, the BE Myers Kiji. Yeah. I'm a huge fan of it. Uh, I like that one. That's probably one of my favorite ones just for the fact that now price doesn't make me a huge fan of it. It's a 900 IR, I, you know, IR head. So that is a little bit of expensive. But, you know, you do get what you pay with, with it. Yeah. You actually have some adjustment in it. So you have some brightness in it. You mm -hmm. have some flood. So, like, based on how you program it and you click your, you know, click your pressure pad or, or, your, or your, you know, tape switch or whatever, your, your pad on it, you can, you can kind of roll through mm -hmm. where you have a tighter beam to a more wide open. So you yeah. have more of a flood to a, to a direct beam. So I like that one quite a bit. 
One of the other ones that we ran a lot is the um, Ma Malakoff head. Yeah, I, I mean that's the, how you say it. The um, Malakoff head is 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 a good budget option if you yep. don't if you're wanting just like hey I just need flood now yep. and you want to have a good strong flood that's dedicated. The Malakoff head I think comes in two two brightness. Yeah, they have two they have two, two, two different brightness settings. One is going to be more of a flood. One's going to be more of a direct beam. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would say the only downside that I can find to the Malakoff head, and I would highly I, we, I would highly suggest it because we run them, is sometimes it may actually be a little bit too much, too much. flood. Yeah. Uh, a little too bright and you get some auto gating mm -hmm. going on things like yep. that uh, you get a little bit backsplash yeah. so it's more crucial with that head of making sure that you have it mounted far enough forward on your rifle mm -hmm. that you're not getting splash off your suppressor or your yeah. other AR IR aiming devices and yeah. stuff like that yeah. uh, or if you're around barricades or things like that you may get some mm -hmm. splash off of that I think to kind of your point about the BE Myers Kiji yes you are spending nine hundred dollars on a on an IR you get adjustability oh, yeah, yeah. and then you can go if you have the IR already the flood yeah. then you can just get a laser module and yeah. that can be right. a lot a good money saver. You don't have to go super expensive. Yeah, you, you can pick everything. up a you can pick up a sub five hundred dollar. Yeah, you know laser, and then with the BER Myers, you're almost looking at mall capability for a PEC price, Correct. like a PEC exactly. C. Yeah, price, so, so. Um, that's that's you know that's kind of where we put our focus is on mm -hmm. that IR head. Uh, so we run the BE Myers uh, Kiji. That's that's a very very popular one uh, in our in our book. What about our lights? Our white lights. Um, you know, <laughs> we um, actually need white. Lights. Yeah, we need white lights. <laughs> we need white lights in a bad way. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, um, Typically, what you'll find on most of our systems is mod light. Mm. Uh, mm. I, the Surefire Turbo heads I know are really, really good. Mm -hmm. I like something with a high candel candela mm -hmm. output. Um, we have very wide open areas that we shoot in, yeah. in the dark, so we need something with a nice good throw to it. Yeah. I mean, as um, far as the different lights we're running, we're running Cloud Defensive, mm -hmm. uh, stri uh, Surefire, and also What's the other one you said? Mod light. Mod light. So yeah. those are the pretty much. I mean, at, at mm -hmm. the end of the day, get something that's a high, a good manufacturer. Yeah. If you're on a budget, Streamlight is also a great option. Yeah, I actually have several yeah. Streamlights. Um, we were actually just having this conversation the other day, and I'm not saying that Streamlights don't break, but I was going back through my mind and thinking like how many times I've actually had to replace a light body or or like a uh, like a light head because it burnt out or mm. you know melted a battery inside of it or something like that and I'm like you know what has it probably actually ever found me failed me it was a freaking stream light, light. <laughs> you know um, <laughs> now their output is not necessarily the greatest yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you're in a very close environment, stuff like that, you don't have to mm -hmm. get beyond probably, you know, 50 yards or something right. like that, then the Streamlight yeah. is definitely going to do everything that you need it to do. But if you need a light to start pushing beyond that 50 yards and getting out to 100 or maybe slightly beyond 100, mm -hmm. you're probably going to look at like Mod Light or, or like the new Turbo from Surefire. Yeah. Um, those are probably going to be your, your best for that. Yeah. Uh, and then that honestly, scenario. like Cloud has their recharging battery capability as well. So mm -hmm. like as far as lights, that's a whole video on its own, but understand. Yeah. Go with those good, uh, those good. Yeah, companies. pick up a reputable company when it comes to your company, white light. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, if you're a white light company, and you want to send us some stuff. I'll, I'll take it for sure. We're living in the dark. <laughs> we're living in the dark. Yeah, <laughs> for the exception with our IR stuff. Like, yeah, we're sitting pretty, yeah, we're sitting pretty, solid with yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Um, bipods. Well, we run a lot of bipods because we run um, our general purpose rifles. We want them to kind of be capable of a lot of things. Yeah. Now, a bipod is something very heavy to throw on your rifle, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. We want to be able to take it off of there. So quick disconnect systems. Yes. So we run a lot of QD systems. Um, I, I don't know where my rifle went, but anyways. It's in the dark. It's we the we dark. need lights, so send us some light so we can find this rifle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Some type of QD system. American Defense makes a really, really yeah. solid one. Mm -hmm. uh, Kinetic Development Group, I know mm -hmm. they make some QDs. Magpul makes a QD system. Yeah. Uh, that's really, really good. Any way that you can kind of quickly disconnect your bipod from your rifle. Yeah, I think it's it's there's a lot of recce rifles out there right now, or general purpose rifles where there's bipods put on them and they're hard attached. And we find this in our scope carbine class, yep. where folks have their uh, you know they M, M locked in, yep. uh, and it's kind of nice to depending on your barricade size. If you're walking in the woods, sometimes it's just nice to take that thing off, throw it in your bag, or throw it in your chest yeah. or whatever you have, and then when you need it, put it on. Yeah. But when we're actually running matches or whatever, or going to a gas gun 
one match or something like There's that. There's some scenarios, like some yeah, some stages nice. where yeah. not having the barricade, ba um, not barricade, the bipod. Having the bipod on the rifle actually fits better inside the barricade. Yeah. Uh, so so having that ability to remove it, just kind of like your sling, it's one of those accessories that sometimes you may have to dive out of. Yeah. And not utilize. Yeah. And that 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 is very true with the bipod. So set your bipod up on a quick quick disconnect system. There's a lot of good QDs out there. Uh, as far as the bipod itself, um, if you want a good solid bipod that's been around for a long time, pick up a Harris. Harris. You can't go wrong with mm -hmm. a Harris. Um, the other option I would say is looking at uh, Magpul's. Mm -hmm. I like actually Magpul's bipod. It's not probably the most sturdy. It's not the most stable, mm. but it does have a clean look to it, um, and it's not overly heavy. Mm. So, light. Uh, yeah, it's light like light. I said, you want to go light, you're going to sacrifice yeah, something. Gonna sacrifice. If you're going to go heavy, you're going to... But have... if you want a solid bipod that's yeah. not going to have a lot of flex for you and it's been around forever and it's been used on Mark 12s uh, and, you know... Which is God's gun. Yep, correct. So yep. if it's been used on a Mark 12 or M110 or anything like that, then, then you know, it's probably the end-all be-all. Yeah. And that would be the Paris bipod. So, Paris. Uh, specifically, not the self-leveling one. The one that has the notches, mm -hmm. so basically it's labeled as notches, so you have the ability to click it in between. Yeah. I'm not a huge fan of the self-leveling one. The self-leveling one has little knobs that you turn on it and it kind of drops down and then you're sitting there messing with it. I would prefer to actually <laughs> just reach for it and hit a little button and drop it down. Um, and then um, swivel, have an ability to pivot with it. Yeah, so. that's nice. That's nice. So, Anything else you can think of that I'm missing? Not that I can think of. I mean, oh, I mean, I guess for our mags, the mags that we run, Duramag yep. and Magpul. Yep. And if you're on running, Magpul yeah. um, and Gen 3s. Gen 3s. Gen 3s. Specifically. Uh, specifically. Gen 2s. I got a lot of Gen 2s. The Gen 2s still mm -hmm. work perfectly fine. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, the Gen 3s are a much improvement. Yeah. That over insertion lip yeah. on it, it makes a big difference. So yeah. um, if you're running mag poles, um, go, with, go with Gen 3s. There's not a whole lot of cost difference mm -hmm. between them. It doesn't matter if you go window or not. Um, I don't know how many times I actually look at my window too too much but i don't yeah so i look out windows all the time but i don't really look at that one yeah most yeah. of my mags are spray painted anyways yeah <laughs> so the window gets painted yeah uh, i buy whatever i get on sale when it comes to that yeah uh, but a couple of good companies so if you want uh, more of that traditional gi style mag metal mag mm -hmm. if you like that feel that vibe uh the dura mags are, are great plus they're a really really cool company with mm -hmm. a bunch of good dudes down there yeah so pick up a dura mag they do some cool colors mm -hmm. and, and then, they do steel they do steel yeah, they mags. do steel mags steel too. Mags. i tell you what if you want to go fast and you steel want your mag. mags to drop super clean yeah. go with the duramag steel mag yeah. so like if you're a straight up performance based mm -hmm. not only that they're also very durable they're very durable they're very durable yeah but man those things just fall out of the gun because they, they just shoot out like rockets so. yeah but they are heavy so yeah. once again you're at can't have everything you can't have everything yeah so uh but yeah mags I can't think of anything else. I mean, the biggest thing also is we, we come to find out what parts we need and what upgrades we like based off of going out and training. You guys hear us say it all the time. You probably get tired of it. You're probably <laughs> like, quit telling us to train. We're training. We get it. We but get it. You, if you're watching us for the first time and you're new to the channel, we you have to invest in yourself. Go take training. Come train with us. Uh, if you find another good training company, make sure you at least go get training and investing in yourself and not being a liability. And not all these accessories are the end-all be-all. No. We're just telling you how we have our rifle set up. Uh, this is based on our experience, based on our, our, our knowledge that mm -hmm. we have and things that we've tried and, and what we didn't like. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of great companies that make phenomenal accessories out there. Um, or versions so, of what we're talking Or versions about. of what we have. Yeah. Uh, this is just what you'll find on our gun. We get the question asked quite often, mm -hmm. and so we felt like, okay, well, let's just make a video and we'll answer it. Yeah. Um, if you got more questions on this, or you ever want to try any of these products or something like that, and you're out there and you see us, um, hit us up. Hit us up. Come over and shoot with us. Come mm -hmm. and train with us. That is, like I said, once again, the best way to support us. And plus, you'll find out about your gear and how it's set up if it's yeah. if it's uh, if it's for, for you, you if not, it works yeah. for you. So. I think if you also want to go check out our Instagram page, we have behind the scenes stuff, as photos and reels and all that stuff. Also, every video that's on YouTube is also on Rumble. So if there's there are some videos on Rumble that are not on YouTube. And that's for a reason. Uh, and then also we have uh, Spotify where all of our guest-only episodes are on there where we interview How guests. easy are we to find on Rumble? You just type Barrel and Hatchet. Oh, okay. 
So yeah. you don't have to sign up for a subscription. No, we don't. Right, like like you were saying, we don't have any subscription yep. thing. It's cool. you support us through training with us and buying. So products no Patreon on the or nothing like that. No, no. we don't have a Patriot no. website. Yeah, is it Pat Patreon? Patreon. Patreon. So. Yeah, no Patreon or anything like that. So no uh, only fans. Watching. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no no Maybe. only fans. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe we'll start selling range feet picks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Our uh, sweaty socks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Come and train with us. Uh, the best way to support us, like Eric said, is, is watch our videos, mm -hmm. hit that like and subscribe button. And uh, if you got any questions, get down there in the comment section. If you're running a certain piece of gear that you really, really like, drop it down in there. If you're running any of this stuff, let people know your experiences, mm -hmm. whether it's good and bad, because you may have something here that says, you know what, man, I was running a freaking, you know, Magpul CTR stock and it broke on me mm -hmm. 15 different times. Yeah. I don't know. Um, let us know. Yeah. Anyways, go out and train. Make sure you're not the liability, but you are the asset. And we'll see you on the next episode. Until next time. See ya. Pew pew.